Harry I'm Pop recording this. Skype is telling me to not <laughs> violate your privacy and let you know that I'm recording you. Oh, hey. I appreciate that. Look at what's up? I'll be Everybody say hey. Yo. Hello. Like, I was Hello. watching back when you got to see when how they drew their map and how they just made up a bunch of shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm pulling up the game notes here. I'm so glad that's recorded, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> I thought nobody would notice. I'm glad somebody noticed. I, I missed it. <laughs> now I have to watch this recording. I have to. <laughs> when last we saw our heroes, there was a, a fight broke out, yes? Tong got stabbed in the back. I almost died. <laughs> this hooded when, figure, uh, like, stabs Ton. It was an epic fight. Um, he was kind of tough. Assassin was an evasive fuck. We determined. Yeah, right. Yes. An evasive fuck. But he was unable to evade Daydark's chilling touch, which killed him in the end. But we, not before we Usher, had a nice uh, long rest. uttering his his uh, his menacing remark of Zotilaha will return. Yeah, yeah, right. whatever. <laughs> whatever, chump assassin. We could beat six of you. Ton's beat up, he goes to sleep. Uh Hortensio inquires about uh, an ukulele. No one really understands what that is, except for Hortensio. Uh, he gave he gave a great explanation of what it is and where it comes from, and that was not written down. A crime against the humanity of Era <laughs> it, was, it, it was specifically a flying a muck. Used to fly a muck. Era Cocra, right? Yeah. So it's an era era of Era Cocras. <laughs> <laughs> you decide how it's spelled, Mike. A bunch of JFKs up there. They're, they're a JFK based race. <laughs> Era Cocra. Record scratch. Oh, yeah, dude. A, re a record. A record of Era Cocras. <laughs> That's kind of cool. It's a yeah. record of them. A whole record. <laughs> the whole record of flying. <laughs> Almost kind of. like like enough that you would want to write it down. <laughs> After breakfast, you guys went over to see uh, your old friend Luke and to ask him for a, a, a ukulala, whatever they're called. So um, he just went on a sweet drum solo. Well, first he played the he played the viol. And then he played a drum solo, and then he told you that it was part of the four. And now you guys get to decide what you want to do with that information. As I recall, we wanted to talk to Luke, but then the next move was maybe to actually go to uh, Tremos. Because um, weren't we after a library in Tremos? We were after a library for sure. Right. Yeah, let's it's hit the road. after my dream. <laughs> to Tremos... We go. Well, we thank Luke kindly for his uh, for the information he has shared and for his friendship and for being a chiller and all. But uh, we we must make make haste to, to where the action is. I hitch up Rana, Rana, our horse at the at the chariot. You guys just packing up your stuff. You, you have everything you need. You don't want to stop for rations. You just want to head out. Rations. Yeah, you're gonna make us like eat rations no. each day. No, <laughs> no, but I need then, you guys to start spending money, okay? Then I don't oh, think I need rations. I, I'm ever ready again. to spend some money. I already told you what I want to spend it on. I just need to find where to buy it. I just don't know where to go, oh, dudes. Everybody, yes, subtract I'll... your subtract your gold for your lifestyle if you want to spend money that way. Ah, uh, yes. Bought us so I'm subtracting one gold. How do you afford that Bartle right. lifestyle? Uh, make us make us buy we need to buy food for Rana. I need to buy food for Rana. Like we're probably out of food, right? Have we ever even bought her food? Have you what ever fed her? Hell? She's dead. <laughs> She's no. been grazing all this time, you, right? You wake up to find right? a dead horse. No, you've been paying rent on that horse. I uh, while they we discuss this, I do also start at night takes me a little bit of time, but I start my ritual to find steed. Because I actually have a special magical horse of my own. Fantastic. Will you what? describe your special magical horse? Let me what, see once he gets here, uh, because I they have a description for him, but I think I'd like to have a little bit of my own as well. 
Um, but a summon a spirit that assumes the form of an unusually intelligent, strong, and loyal steed, creating a long-lasting bond with it. Pairing in an unoccupied space within range, the steed takes on a form that you choose, a war horse, horse a pony, a camel, an elk, or a mastiff. Uh, feed costs five copper pieces per day of food. It's 360 days of sun. Let's get 60 days of feed. That makes so five copper pieces, 300 copper pieces, um, which would be 30 silver. So that's just three gold pieces. Sweet. Three gold. We're set for food. For I'm, the doing the, I'm doing the gold. Got it. Hell yeah. You set out to a town that apparently, based on the map, you've passed through several times without even noticing it was a town. Mm -hmm. There's a certain patch of road where uh, um, the trees grow much larger and, uh, and, and um, dwarf over the path that you've always taken. And for the first time, this time, um, you notice that there are paths that lead up into the trees. Uh, a couple of trees have have arches carved into them that lead to stairs that lead up into the the, the trees themselves. Um, there's stairs. different tree houses and things um, perched with with rope bridges uh, across tree uh, That's limbs. Sweet. Um, so welcome to Tree Mouse, gentlemen. That's sexy. Uh, I want to fly around. I just, we... just kind of want to check it out from a pie. I, I would like to locate the library, but I also want to locate uh, some some um, some stores. I'm looking for some defensive equipment, and I'm just curious if I see any uh, on my way to either seeing the library or seeing a store. <laughs> Absolutely. You just jump off the back of the car chariot, and you're 100%. like, well, this must just be like, it. Look at that boom. cool tree thing. Like, this is just, like, built for me. Like, I don't need to climb the stairs. I'll just fly up there. <laughs> uh, they don't have a lot of parking for uh, for Rana, uh, but there is a, a, a small area where you can, um, maybe a small fenced-in area where you can um, lead up your horse to, to a fence post or something. Uh, Velomir, you take flight. You begin to, to to soar through the trees. This place was really made for you. Um, you appear to be the only flying uh, being uh, here, <clears throat> um, despite the altitude of the rest <laughs> of the population. Got it. Uh, wow. Am I drawing I, some gazes? Is it how populated is it? Um, it's quite populated. It's uh, there's there's people walking across every bridge you see. It's mostly, it, it's it's no people you haven't seen before. It's it's an eclectic group. It's there's humans. There's there's half elves. There's dragonborn. There's tieflings. There's people just out wandering around like a regular city. Um, it's it's much busier than Primos would be, um, and then you see a lot more people, uh, more casually dressed than you do in Avonshire. Um, Avonshire, you usually see people in their, their finery out, perhaps walking from meeting to meeting or to uh, to lectures or, or to shows or whatever they do um, in Avonshire. Um, it's, you see more people in, in um, market wear or um, let it, leather studded armor and that kind of thing. Uh, Less There's formal, a few signs. Like work, it's like a working town. It's a working town, yes. Uh, but it's beautiful and made of trees. That's correct. <laughs> uh, uh, you you notice um, different signs here and there. Uh, one that says, uh, well, give me a perception roll as you're out there flying around. Natural one plus three is four. Um, <laughs> Clearly, yeah, just 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 taken away by the altitude and like keep, not keep really flying. noticing anything specific. You you just keep just you finally get an adventure that's outside of a dungeon, so you're just out there. These just, trees just are so fucking it. tall. Guys, you know, like, get to go up this time. We're going up. We're going up, you guys. You guys are going up. <laughs> just saying that into the into the, the jade earrings. Um, <laughs> and. Uh, and he, and he, as he, as he flies up, he reaches to the top of the trees. Imagine, imagine, uh, like, uh, redwoods or, or big spruce trees. Those are the kind of things that you're, you're, you're flying around that, that all this, this whole town seems to be, um, the, uh, built, built, into, built into, yeah. Yeah. Um, 
you notice as you get higher up, there's fewer and fewer things. Um, you notice on some of the taller trees, it seems to be more like uh, apartments wouldn't be the word, but like homes, Sweet. but high vertically. Uh, and then towards the top, there is a, uh, a uh, hot air balloon. Um, like a, like a, imagine, a hot air balloon's not right. Like a blimp. Yeah, like a steam, like a steamship, like a steampunk uh, blimp. Oh. There's just a steampunk um, blimp, like, just floating up here? Uh, it's, it's, it's tied to one of the trees. How high up is it? Um, he only noticed it because he went up as high as he did. You guys wouldn't see it where you are. Okay. Well, Yo, guys, there's this weird blimp up here. <laughs> I also oh, want to describe the the, the, the the markets and the the um, the ambiance a little bit more. Imagine a little bit more steampunky than I than I had originally. Less, got it. Got it. So it's not walk quite out of place. No. no. Yeah. It's, it it doesn't look as 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 strange as it got sounded it. as I described it. I just like the idea of there being. Got one. it. I had this sort of like, you know, like elvish vibe is, going on you know like one with that. nature but instead there's like they they do it's like pretty industrial but they understand nature and like not destroying right. their home their like yes planet yes. you can you more can tell, so you can tell that they're they're um the Frankly, harmony right between, between the, yeah, yeah. The, the 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 trees and the metal of, of this town economical industrious but also like in harmony with <laughs> where they live got it this is a cool town, you guys. <laughs> I want to go for a blimp ride, and I want to stay in a treehouse. Can we find an inn in a treehouse? Well, you definitely could. Let's go. Uh, do you guys want to start at the inn? Maybe check in first? Yeah, yeah definitely. Find a spot to stay. Yeah, I think uh, we cruise around. I kind of want to pick a high maybe? one. If I... If I uh, uh, yeah, I'm going to use my nature roll and like find the tree that looks big and thick and be like, all right... Thick ass tree. The thick ass tree's got to have something. Uh, Nineteen. Okay. Um, you are able to find uh, the highest higher uh, in of a tree. Um, it's it's thick in that there was two trees that kind of split, right? And it still kept going into one tree. Uh, but you can see that there's there's different bridges and things and 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 buildings holding the both halves of the tree together. Um, that one is, uh, it's the tallest, and as you're kind of admiring it, uh, people on the ground who are near other people, not Velomir, uh, over onlookers and passersby will tell you that's the most expensive inn. But Tom's it is nice. I up. think I found the place for you. <laughs> it is Let's nice. do it. This is your Say spot. No more. <laughs> Let's stay here, guys. Let's do it. What's it called? Uh, it is called the uh, the pine needle. Yeah, totally. Hmm. Well, certainly, the cost isn't coming from their marketing department. <laughs> All right, Hortensio, you come up with something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not criticizing it. I'm merely saying that the value of this establishment lies elsewhere, and not in their marketing or public relations it's meant to give it everyone knows the biggest vibe. tree in town they don't need to like compensate <laughs> that's true it's intrinsically awe-inspiring yeah as you guys are climbing um not necessarily from climbing i just meant in in gaining altitude from from tree to tree and and from path to path um you 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 start to realize that you're reaching about um i want to say uh, a third of the way up this tree is the entrance to the pine needle as i look around um do i notice any safety uh precautions taken in, in the architecture of this city or is it uh, truly if you fall off these narrow bridges there you fall or do they have nets or or uh, anti-gravity spells, or uh, other protections of that sort. Uh, give me both a perception roll and a dexterity save. Oh, <laughs> perception roll first. 
will be um, an 18. Dexterity saving throw is a 15. Okay. Um, there, besides the ropes uh, and the various railings, um, some being wood, somebody they there is precautions to stop you from going over, um, but there is nothing to stop you from hitting the ground. Oh, I'm sorry. You said 18 on perception. Was was 15 the the perception or was 15 the the? Dex? 15 was the the dex and yeah. Um, you do notice an aura of magic. Um, that seems to to uh, stop items from falling, but. Mm. Huh. Nice. I I uh, I mentioned to the bottles. I I say. I'm detecting a, a slight aura of magic here, but it doesn't seem like something that would protect a, a, a humanoid from a fall, but only objects. It seems to be perhaps a uh, protection against petty pickpocketing, uh, grabbing something and tossing it down to a, um, an accomplice below, but, uh, but I haven't figured it out. Well, don't fall. And Ton starts running the rest of the way to the pine needle. <laughs> I, Ong stops and like tries to think for a second, like, like kind of like makes it like maybe if I get myself in like a cannonball kind of shape, like maybe that, a, maybe that will be if okay. If I think I'm an item, will they think I'm an item? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're an item, Ong. You're an item. <laughs> I, 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 I second guess it and I keep walking. <laughs> Um, I, as I as I'm like flying around, I'm gonna like converge on this tree with the with the guys, and and I'm interested in in um, exploring as much as possible. Um, so I I decide I want to bust out uh, this. I have this really cool owl, uh, and so I'm gonna land basically at the entrance of this thing, and uh, ostensibly I can like approach a landing from the outside or maybe i'll be like force fielded out but i would like to just land i'm not expecting a force field but um and then i and then i want to bust out the figuring uh the, the serpentine owl uh a figurine of wondrous power um and blah 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 blah, blah. it the the statuette turns into a giant owl for eight hours uh, once it has been used, it can't be used again until two days have passed, but it can telepathically communicate with me at any range um, as long as we're on the same plane of existence. Cool. So basically, I want to, like, put this owl up and do some, like, observation of this town uh, while, while we're also observing... Um, the canopy portion. The canopy portion. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. So so just kind of another another uh, thing to see stuff. I keep looking at I keep looking to see I keep getting disappointed because I still can't see this blimp. Like I'm so excited not only to see the blimp but to get on the blimp. I can't I keep see looking seeing that. I keep looking over the edge and I keep looking over at Hortensio. Um and once I kind of get Hortensia's attention, I dive over What? I dive over the edge. You jump? <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, my God. Once you get um, his attention? Once you get Hortensia's attention. Once, once he can yeah. see me, he tells I, that I'm looking, that I'm, that I'm antsy. And, and as he dives, I, I wild shape into the largest bird I can. <laughs> uh, yes. And, and dive bomb after him, wings flush back behind me. And as he comes diving, he hears, and then like kind of shooting back up with a whistle in his, in his mouth. I come like, uh... back up. I'm trying to get enough air now to see the blimp. <laughs> I forgot all your sweet whistles. I forgot about the whistle too. Hortensio did as well, and he's, he's embarrassed that he, he burned his wild shape for this again, 
yet I another ineffectual like, wild shape. No, you get so, to fly around, dude. It, but, so he Go chases fly Todd and, here. and nips off one of his shoes and, and flies away. <laughs> you nip off one of Todd's shoes? God damn. I mean, not Todd's uh, Ong shoes oh. as Ong's fly. <laughs> Todd's like, leave me out of it. I'm still on the like, ground. I'm going to go book us a room. <laughs> Oddly enough, he, the, he gets the whole foot with the shoe for some reason uh, and is now carrying Ong's foot. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's right, Ong's <laughs> just come off easily, huh? Um, Hortensio panics and spits it out. <laughs> Does the field catch it? You see as... Uh, you, know what happens. <laughs> you see as a foot uh, plummet to the ground. Um, and you see, uh, give me a, give me a, who's watching the foot? Who's watching the fallen foot? Uh, Velomir, Velomir's owl. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's watching this foot. They see Everyone's people watching on the foot. ground are watching this happen. Give me a, give me an arcana check. A couple of concerned locals. <laughs> All right, I got 15. What'd the owl get? <laughs> owl got fucking four. <laughs> Um, you see, uh, you see that there is a, um, but they're additive sense that they're telepathically communicating. <laughs> um, you see the, you see the, the foot falling and you see, uh, a magical aura, um, reach out to catch it. And, uh, as it does it, the, the foot hits the magic aura and just keeps going like a slide. And goes off into into in between a couple trees, off into the distance. Meanwhile, because it's it's a breath based flight, like I keep trying to like almost like you know like <gasps> <gasps> <laughs> like falling like up. It's and like down. swimming but flying. Circular right. breathing. Yeah. <laughs> Just still trying to see that uh, that blimp, and I catch a glimpse of it, and uh, and make it. Make it back down to uh, where where the platform where Tan is standing. Okay. Ortensio, uh, uh, now that he's gathered his wits about what just happened, realizes he should probably go get that foot. So he uh, goes to the ground and starts rooting around trying to find the fallen foot. Um. Did you see it go off on the magic? I didn't see if you. I didn't know if you saw the aura. Oh, I definitely one. watched it. Did I mean, you? I spat it out and then realized that I. Just, oh, you just saw it. You just got out my friend's foot. Gotcha. Because um, from your point straight. of view, did it, it tried did, to grab did it, it and it just like didn't work. No, uh, no. From your arcana roll, it looks like that's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to catch it and direct it somewhere else. I see. I see. I see. Got it. Hmm. Really quite ingenious. Um, so I grab coins and I start dropping them, and I see where they're sliding to. Nice. So, how many coins uh, are you getting rid of? <laughs> Couple of coppers. No, I'm not getting crazy with this shit. <laughs> coppers fall further before they're caught. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, so, um, as you're dropping items, uh, again, you see the the magic slide, as it were, catch the coins and they shoot off in the other direction. Do you, and you start following them. I'm following them. Um, let's check back in with Ton. Ton, welcome been, to uh, the welcome I, to the to the pin the pin needle. What did I call it? The pine needle. The pine needle. It? The pine needle. Welcome pine. to the pine needle. Um, you walk in and it's kind of like this grand. Uh, it's like right at the split of the tree that the entrance is. Oh right. baby, everything and wood carved. It's, it's this grand uh, arboretum, for lack of a better word, because there are <laughs> yes, yes. smaller trees within them. And uh, you see, tight. you see as as several rooms kind of are peering over into the crack of the tree, and then above you, you see um, certain rooms where the tree isn't quite so pulled apart. Are are one room across, um, and then straight ahead is the uh, front desk of the hotel, the inn, I suppose. I walk right up. Uh, even if there are people there, I walk directly to the front of the line because I have no decorum. I don't even understand what a line is. And I say, hello, I'm Ton with the Bartles. Do you have any uh, 
Do you have any big rooms that could sleep four together? Uh, that would be one of our suites. But, well, we'll book a suite for, um, uh, let's say, three nights. Um, 120 gold pieces? Yep. Um, it'll be 150 if you'd like a balcony. Let's do 150. Yeah, that's, yeah. How, that's how it's magnificent. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. Honestly, we're really feeling a vacation. This is what I'm... <laughs> that's all the really what I'm <laughs> Ton, Ton doesn't even like radio... <laughs> No, no, no. We, Ton wants time to check out the library. That's why we're getting a nice place. Hortensia, what's the um, what's the name of the 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 pub in the in down? It's so up is the inn, and up are the rooms, and down is the the pub, like the the food and the, the restaurant of the of the this inn. What is the name of the the pub of the Pine Needle? Uh. The, the Bramble piece. Root Tavern. Bramble Root Tavern. Fantastic. Bramble um, root, right beneath. Bram <laughs> Bramble <Pine> Root. <laughs> uh, well, no, there should be two, though. So Bramble Root is at ground level. Above Bramble Root is uh, do a do. It's like D E W a do. <laughs> oh, like goodbye in, in D I E U X. Because. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But it's also two. two. It's the second one is like the second in a chain. So it's do, I do, do. Much ado. Much ado. <laughs> For you. Oh, man. In the Bramble yeah. Tavern. Don't be a sap. Come in for a drink. <laughs> um, yeah, so a comedy club oh, down I, can't below wait to, I can't wait to try sap. some sap, sap ale. That sounds divine. Yeah. Yeah. Sap hell yeah Sad mead, yeah yeah so your uh the the um front desk operator you can tell i work in a hotel the front desk <laughs> uh, receptionist <laughs> that's the word i wanted the the front desk receptionist calls over one of the the bellmen um and the bellman uh begins to take your bags the concierge yeah the concierge <laughs> <laughs> oh man tree puns i'm gonna be all about it all day <laughs> so he grabs he, he he begins to direct you upstairs um he in and in 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 taking the many stairs up to your room um he he mentions that there is the uh if you're looking for something to eat please stop by our 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 our, our three white glove restaurant uh the the do i do do i do <laughs> something a little bit more casual uh be sure to stop by the bramble inn um down uh, at the lowest level of the tree thank you uh, thank you here is the key to your room sir and we hope you enjoy your stay i guarantee you we will all right there what, what are your what are your policies what are your policies about um about fires in the rooms do you have a fireplace he he doesn't know if you're being serious or not. Ton's not so smiling. Once, once once he's like looking at you and you kind of has this you have a serious face and he realizes oh this is a serious face. Uh no no fires at all yeah. sir we're 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 in a tree. <laughs> like we're we're in we're in a this is a this is a tree. okay so no you're saying no. Fire, no flame please, at all. Please, no fire. Okay, not even in like life-threatening no, situations. I, no. Okay. Um, there's no smoking allowed in the hotel. Okay. Uh, the no smoking hotel. I re I respect uh, all forms of expression. Uh, uh, I really quick. Um, as he's checking in, I'm I'm uh, just interested in how this force field um, uh, will play with something that moves a little faster potentially something that's shot from a crossbow and i just want to like not really hit anyone in particular but i would like to aim at some ground that's not populated and just shoot a crossbow bolt uh give me uh, a give me a, a ranged weapon uh, ranged weapon attack at the ground from way up high 12. 12 is enough to hit the ground uh your your bolt just goes straight down Untouched by some hand of God. Un, untouched, un, 
un, uh, unfiltered. Sounds great. Sweet. Jens, I'll see you on the balcony. <laughs> Unless Tom didn't tell us that we, we he got us a balcony. <laughs> I now I'm ready to it. I, I got us a suite. It's on the it's on the 42nd floor. Uh, we have a balcony. We're all going to sleep in the same room together with four beds. It's got to be great. You each have your own room in this suite. It's it's a nice. You guys went with the nice expensive place. Okay, whatever. Um, but your your room your room is is. Uh, can it be like can it be like there's separated rooms, but like there's space between like the walls and like the ceiling of the chamber that we're in? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Absolutely. crazy lofts. Yeah, it's it's so, epic it's, loft. It, space well, so much of this, like so much of this town, it was built into what they were able to do with the space that they had in the tree. Um, your main living area is uh, what appears to be. Give me a perception roll, Con. While I try to think of how, how I want to describe this. Twenty-two. Okay, so if you were able to step out the balcony and perceive the building as a whole, um, your room, your the main living area of your room, your space is like a bracket holding two parts of the tree splitting together. Sweet. Um, your main That's balcony cool. is that is that area on top of that bracket. That's the balcony. And then there's stairs down into the main living space, and then the loft and your your bedrooms are on the uh, on one of the sides of the tree. The way up was on the other. I recline on a on a divan of some type, and my tail <laughs> wiggles happily in the air. An acorn divan. <laughs> <laughs> they really use everything here. They they could have brought a, a divan in, but they made one nope. out of nope. acorns from this very tree. Waste not, want not. Waste not, want not. Is that what you said? <laughs> I did. Uh, <laughs> Waste not, you'll want that nut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we want. Well, everyone wants the nut. Uh, <laughs> And with that, we come back to our friend uh, Hortensio, who is what kind of bird did you turn into? A pelican. You are a large pelican. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm just I think you're probably also a great owl. I think would be the other, the other uh, bird of uh, of choice for you. I know you. eagles in the list, but I don't know if I've earned it. You know what I mean? Gotcha. Um, so you're some sort of flying animal, and and you're you're following as your coins are being swept down. Um, a little bit faster than gravity um, toward in between trees uh, and starting to kind of uh, converge with other dropped items. You see a maybe a uh, a, a pen of some kind. Uh, somebody dropped a glove. There's one of those baby shoes that you always see. Uh, and then uh, a handful of other things that are probably garbage, um, little bits of scrap and and um, a nail and a actual lost and found. Nice. And you're following um, in between the trees, and you make it to uh, the lost and found. You see, as it, as it, uh, as it, there's a, there's a knot in a tree with a hole in it, and um, you see as all of the, the kind of um, different magical slides, so to speak, merge into one. Is this place attended, or is it? Is, I'm the only one here. Um, well, that's not the entrance. It doesn't look like you would fit um, through that door. Um, but down below, you see the the entrance um, to the uh, tree most lost and found. Uh, well, I'm going to remain in bird form as uh, I see no shame in my avian uh, nature right now. Uh, and I'm going to head towards the, uh, the entrance. Fantastic. Um, there's a, a yet another small balcony for, on which you can land. Um, you you come up to uh, the door. Uh, it doesn't look like you as a, I'm imagining a large creature um, would fit through. Um, but you see above the sign, you say, it says, um, it looks like the sign had been graffitied, but it, it, it says lust and found. Lust and found? 
With AG. Um, yeah. Uh, I call out Yuhu. Anybody here? Can you speak common in bird form? I believe so. Oh, so it's limited to the capabilities of bird form. Yeah, so you're right. Um, so I'm going to come out of wild shape then and call out uh, Hawk. Is anybody here? Um, a woman says, uh, um, yes, yes, come in. Uh, I enter. Um, you see the back of a, uh, you see the back of a woman, a woman of some descript, and I will describe her to you once I figure out who she is. Um, As she, you're doing that, um, I'm looking around and just taking sort of a mental snapshot of the different things that are strewn about. Um, just trying to get a sense for what what is here. If people are uh, um, dropping valuables here, if if uh, this place is really falling into disrepair, and that I'm actually on a wild goose chase, and I'm never getting on a split back. Trying to get a sense of like if this place is really serving its function or not. Um, it is quite organized. Um, you notice above that there are, um, as you walk in and you notice above, you see the sunshine shining in through the knot in the tree, and you're seeing little flashes of, of, of items as they, they, they come in. And uh, they're kind of falling into different uh, bins up above, and within each bin leads to like those, uh, those air compressed tubes that you see at the bank where, <laughs> where things boom, boom. Things are just kind of sorting around and, and coming up behind um, this grand wall of um, cubbies that uh, of different shapes and sizes um, that the woman is trying to uh, sort. And uh, it is, um, give me a history roll. Oh, natural one with my... Um, Bonus, though, it's a 10. Um, it is a uh, high elf uh, woman. Um, fast at her work, does not really acknowledge you as you come in. Uh, and she says, um, she says, are you found? Uh, I reply to her in elvish and say, um, greetings, one of the land. Uh, I am found in your uh, esteemed presence, and I'm looking for something very dear to me. Can you help? Uh, well, um, well, you're going to have to learn how to file yourself correctly, because it sounds like you're looking for something, which means you're lost. I say, on the contrary, I myself am found, and it is uh, the foot of my companion that is lost. Um, she points over there, and she she says, uh, "Check under, uh, um, check under dead or uh, or anatomy or body parts." And I start to walk over, and then as I'm about halfway there, I kind of turn over my shoulder and say, "Do you get enough fallen body parts that you have a whole separate section?" <laughs> it's important to be prepared. <laughs> well spoken, one of the land. Not sure. Ton's in town. He's got an axe. He's gonna start cutting limbs off. You never know. You never know. <laughs> you do never know. <laughs> hey, if they've got a bucket for it, we should be filling the bucket. Is all. <laughs> <laughs> Come here. I'm taking your hand off. <laughs> <laughs> we got a quota. <laughs> Let's um, play mumbledy peg. So can I roll investigation to search for this foot? Absolutely. Uh, all right, 12. Um, you Actually, find I'm three... gonna cast guide. Is it too late to guide myself? And add no, go ahead. I haven't that? decided what happens yet. All right, then I'm going to guide myself and make that 14. Can you guide thyself? If I am so willing. <laughs> <laughs> um, it does take some trust. You gotta trust. Yeah. You gotta trust. You gotta trust your instincts. Yeah. Um, 
you find uh, <laughs> what do you find? You find one big toe. You find three feet, and you find one middle finger. <laughs> do any of these feet look familiar to me? I I don't know. Surely I recognize the shoes or the or the color of, of, of Ong's complexion. You're gonna have to roll a an, another. You're gonna have to roll again. Do you remember what your friend's foot looks like? Uh, is that a history or is that a? I would I would accept history, investigation, or perception. All right, let's make it a history. Let's let's test Hortensio's memory for for Ong's uh, foot here. Maybe nature. Uh, that's going to be a 26. Okay, not only yeah. do you find his foot, but you also see your own, uh, um, beak marks from where you, you pulled them off. Ah, uh, then there can be no doubt. Yeah. Um, I, I look back and give her a, a sort of look to indicate, may I take it? I found it. Is that yours? It most certainly is. It has, it has, uh, beak marks that I could attest to. Are certainly mine. I, I had wild shapes to come here. She looks at you and says, "I don't see a beak." As I said, I have wild shapes to come here, and I reverted from that form uh, to enter through your diminutive door. Um. She look upon looking at you for the first time and looking at you closer. She says, "Do I know you?" As all ones of the land know each other, you most certainly. Uh, know me as a family member. No, 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 no. I mean, like, um, like, have you been found before? Or only lost? Ah, as a child, I played hide and seek. I was fair. I sometimes got away from my pursuers. What, what, what do you she, mean? She, she's growing impatient with your long description and be like, no, no would have sufficed. And then she turns around back and goes back to, to filing in. I shrug and just grab the foot. Uh, and I'll just head out. Um, okay. I feel like I've established no rapport with this woman that I uh, need to follow up on our relationship. Invite her to dinner. <laughs> Invite her to drinks. <laughs> is, is this Ton in my ear? 100%. <laughs> like, we literally have the coolest spot in town. That's true. <laughs> um... <laughs> Have you oh, been to the do a do do? Yeah, Hortensio is standing awkwardly in in the uh, precipice of the door, and uh, and asks just that. Have you ever been to do a do do? <laughs> <laughs> I just like that name. Um, and I asked that back in common. I dropped Elvish. Uh, she says, uh, she says, no, I have not. But I and have then, been known to frequent the, the Bramble. Ah. So. I'm sure the Bramble is a fine place, but, uh, a woman of your stature and a steamed station should, uh, should join me in the, in do a do, do, this evening. <laughs> do you have a stutter? Uh, give me some, give me some, uh, some charm. Give me some charisma, friend. Chatty mom. Ooh, twenty-two. Whew. Pick me up here at seven. I'll be here at six fifty-nine. <laughs> ah, the sexiest number. <laughs> <laughs> It's like with a five in the middle. But with a five, yeah. right? All yeah. five of us right in the middle of it. <laughs> which is which is Ong right now because he's missing a foot. <laughs> <laughs> Ong's foot. <laughs> I wave goodbye to her with the foot. And she goes back to what she's doing. As I'm uh, heading back, I realize I did not ask for her name. <laughs> That's information for. Doesn't you know, matter. Third or fourth. Third or fourth date. 
You have a long walk through a busy city with multiple altitudes to try and figure out if you could have guessed her name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm basically trying to use like powers of deduction. So I was like, well, she's a high elf. So uh, and judging by her clothes, I believe she was a high elf of the land. Uh, so I'm going through like the etymologies of names, uh, trying to narrow it down. Fantastic. On my walk. What does everybody else want to do? With the rest uh, of their afternoon, I'm 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 I've sent my owl to uh, deduce the number of of um, what I would like like fine uh, uh, garb fi fine weaponry uh, and 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 armor. Oh, what you're looking for an armor? I'm um, armory, yes, yeah. specifically armory, but not for like. You know, yeah, yeah, an armory. Fuck it. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, Murray's murder armor. <laughs> um, there is, uh, let's say, three shops. Three shops. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna roll perception to see uh, how, which, which, which would be the pref preferred uh, one that I should try first. This is what I'm sort of. Uh, it, Deducing from what my what the owl is communicating, it's re to responding me. back to you. Yeah, uh, and so I got a I got a twenty, unnatural um, twenty for which one I should start with for what I'm looking for. Um, remind me what you're looking for. I'm looking for uh, extremely lightweight, extremely strong, uh, preferably mithril like armor. <sighs> Looking for some fancy shit. Sounds good. Uh, Aerococratic. Aerococratic. Um, Aerococratic. <laughs> Let me take a look here and see what see what that even looks like costs. Just make it fucking expensive. Sure. Let's let's just <laughs> let's just make it cost something. Um so there's the three stores. Uh, what you're able to figure out from the owl is that one is mostly a, uh, a female clothing store, um, mostly for dresses, um, evening wear, that kind of thing, shoes. Uh, the second store is, uh, again, clothes, outfits, more like restocking a uh, disguise kit kind of clothing. And then the one where you want to go, which is more of an armor uh, metalworking, um, plate wear, that kind of thing. Plate wear is W E A R, not W A R E. <laughs> right. Where? <clears throat> cool. And then, uh, did I find the library? I found the library. Oh, uh, it was, um, one tree away from the lost and found. <sighs> So I'm flying around looking for it, and like, Hortensio was just like, fucking right here. <laughs> he's not far, but he's been trying to get back to you, so I don't, I don't know that he was trying to get to the library. A uh, question, does this, does Tremos have a mayor? Or some sort of political head? Or some sort of social political head? It is. Is or socio economical a political council <laughs> <laughs> or socio chemical? Uh, <laughs> it's a council of, of of the council of seeds. I don't like that, I don't feel good about it, but it's a council of some kind. All right, well, I'm also now at the I have hopped my way over to the library, the uh, the mycelian council. There you go. I love that. <laughs> so good. Sweet. Yeah. Just crashed out of the sky and then landed here. And I, um. That's how I imagine you fly when you're. And... So you try not to hit the ground too hard, you know? Yeah, I dive really fast. And then at the very, you know, early, early at the ground, but at the very end, I just like. Whoosh, so you don't really know it's coming until it's very fucking windy and then I've landed. Yeah. I was thinking about Whistle Boy, the one who's flying with a whistle. Oh, oh, yeah, nice. <laughs> I didn't have to fly. 
Oh, was... you hobbled your way there. Yeah. Um, I, I'm guessing you all meet at the library. Yes. That's what I want. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say. And it appears to do. Uh, I also right. want to send my owl uh, around. Um, I'm gonna like passively look for for um, potentially any uh, like I want to say shady uh, shady creatures. Some 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 ruffians. This, you just want to put it on patrol and just yes, let it go I'm out. Like, put it on patrol and and see if I can see anything that that is out of place. This place looks uh, this looks great, but it's also uh, an high commerce enough that there could be crime, and I'm interested in what that crime would be. Fantastic. Uh, uh, do you mind do you if mind we take a brief, brief moment, moment to refill beverages? That's the right call. That'd be a good way. Could we fund um could we fund our uh a fund a D and D stream with uh whiskey sponsorships? Just everybody, all five of us have to drink a different style of whiskey each time. We'll talk about it a little bit. As I go. I love Tremos the place. Tremos like is a cool world. Check out Tremos. That's fucking sick. Dude, so you drew that shit? That looks great. Oh yeah. You drawing shit. Love it. Let's look into it some other time. Back to adventure. So in the library, I have, with Hortensia, has returned my foot and started to tell me about this woman. But I was more interested in the lost and found. And now I'm kind of, as he's looking through books, I'm kind of like slowly chasing him around the library, asking him about the lost and found. I'm like, wait, so I don't understand. There was... There was <laughs> A middle finger, like just a single middle finger. It's like, yeah. I suppose it could have been a ring finger if the beam were very large. Yeah, but how did you know it was a middle finger? It and seemed the, like a middle. Finger. It was the way it was the way it made him feel. <laughs> yeah, there, there was something very lewd about it. Well, somebody found them, so it's not necessarily lost. But I just like keep going on about. I'm like so curious about this lost and found. I keep getting shushed by. Oh, uh, give me a history roll. History roll. 18. Um, you're being shushed by a, a Genasi woman. The librarian. Uh, I think I turn my uh, interest after like maybe about four or five times of, of being shushed. She's like starting to get more agitated. Uh, and now I'm starting to pay more attention to her, and now I'm super interested in her, and maybe even rudely so. Um, um, you you recognize her. Oh. As someone you've say. met before. The Genasi woman. Who is that? Oh, gosh. Who's asking that? I'm just rhetorically. How um, many Genasi women have you met? Just one. That's just, just one. Genasi, what, what, was this what all the way a, back at the Battle of the Bands that we met her? What kind yeah, of a person like, of a person is a Genasi again? A water lady. A water lady. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh, she hung out with Lack, no, right? not, not like the water nymph in the uh, No. Okay. No, that was something else. It what wasn't the Genasi one of Lat's companions? Yep. Uh I burrow my face in a book immediately. <clears throat> lake lit. It's fucking lake lit. Sorry, Somebody sorry. rolled great on their history roll. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> rolling, rolling, scrolling, rolling. Hey, good note scrolling, taking. Scrolling, good rolling. Stuff. Dude, I I took notes at the battle on my character sheet. And that's it. And then never took notes. <laughs> and, that, and then no more notes. <laughs> Only notes I took. Wow, coming fucking handy right now. So, uh, but I'm gonna roll. I'm ready for more battles. to avoid any encounter of any nature with Lakeland. Okay. I rolled a five. And so <laughs> she I'm, you. I'm like, I'm like, you know, he's still trying to get his head in the book, but I have the opposite effect where instead of being shushed, I'm like, whoa, hey, 
Aren't, aren't you with that band that like that we played on the as like and then I'm like Hortensio Hortensio look it's <laughs> I, I like snapped the book close on his hand and he, <laughs> she she said uh, she says I don't know who you think I am but I need you to be quiet as this is a place of of study and learning so please can you please keep it down of course we'll never bother you again goodbye yeah we're in a band. We are all, we are in a band. We, you are in a band. I, in Primos. I've never left Primos. That can't be. I was there, so I I don't think that that's right. Uh, is your name uh, Lakelet? What my name tag says. <laughs> nice. That's a deep history roll right there. <laughs> uh, yeah, thank you, Michael, for, that, for, that, uh, for the help there. Um, uh, well, well, just just trust me. I I, I know I know you. Uh, maybe we can talk about it in a in a place that's more conducive to speech. Give me a persuasion. Oh, hell yeah. Or do you want to also invite her to dinner with a little bit of charisma? <laughs> That's kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm that doing you. that, but not in the same exact tone necessarily. Okay. Um, so we'll go for the persuasion roll of 26. She has sex with you right there. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, uh, yeah. No, so, so she's like, <laughs> she's intrigued by your words. Um, she says... Um, I have always wanted to be a musician. Perhaps we can talk some other time. Well, we'll talk about this later tonight because we're in a band. But can you also point us in the direction of of uh, Popolokas or Zotalaha? I what? Yeah, books on uh, Tamawachin uh, or Omens, Omen deities. Um. I mean, you could look in the, I've never heard of those, but deities, you could check in uh, the religious history section. Religion? I don't, whatever. Libraries are hard. Do a decimal system. I don't know. Yeah, will you take us there? Oh, yeah. Um, so she, she, you, you follow, uh, basically, essentially the, the, let's talk about the layout of this library. It is just a standard tree, just one of the, the, the plain cylinder trees. Um, the, the, the shelves are all against the, um, out, the inner uh, of the tree. So like the, it's all been hollowed out. The tree's been hollowed out and the library books are all over the, the inside, right? And the floor is just a slow, steep uh, ramp that just goes around and around and up the tree and uh, and every once in a while there's a ladder that can be slid up and down and every once in a while there's a window to get a bunch of light in into here but it's just one long if you just keep walking eventually you'll get to r for religion awesome ton is following you like just so confused i've never been in a library before I don't really understand. Well, I guess except for the library. But I mean, comparing this room to the room behind the mirror is is so different because that was a much smaller room that was dark with banshees. It, didn't, it was is, it was a library in that you would call a room in your house a library. This is a library right, in that right. like, this is a place where people go for books. Yeah, and, and honestly, I, I just given Tan's low intelligence, I'm not, I'm not even really, not even really sure like why we're here, like how to, how to help. You might notice Tan like really, kind of like twiddling his thumbs a lot. Like what? They told me I can't use fire here. I just like, what should I be doing with myself? But I'm too embarrassed to ask any of you for for help. Just coming along like, yeah, religion, <laughs> great. <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah, yeah. That's that's a lot. Give me, uh, give me, give me, give me just one uh, intelligence check roll, just for fun, just for funsies. Uh, fourteen. Okay. 
I'll keep that in mind. That was fun. You gotta roll some dice every once in a while. You know what I mean? Please. Um, gotta throw them bones. So, are the three of us or four of us following Lakelet? Three of us? I think I'm three of you. <clears throat> I'm interested. Oh, all four. oh, you're not there, Velmir. No, I'm there, but I don't think I'm immediately following Lake Lit. Okay. I, I, I kind of want to go off myself to try to find, if yeah, possible. Everybody's splitting up to look for their own books now that they kind of understand the like layout of the library. I would like to find a little more about uh, the Cliffs of Velmir. Mm. I'm staying with Ong and Hortensio for now. Um, or about some Aarakocra people, or it seems like that, that there's a potential that I could learn a little bit more about who I am. Uh, who am I? In this place. I don't know if I can navigate it, but that's my hope. Are you... Are you thinking you go to, like, the... the are you looking for like the grand table of contents to look for A for Aarakocra, or are you going to like history, or are you going to geography? Where are you trying to go? Yeah, um, I think I'll start with Aarakocra. Okay. Shouldn't have to walk far. Hey. Uh -huh. There's A for Aarakocra. Totally. Um, there is, uh, there's a book titled Aardvark, and then it goes to art. Shit. <laughs> like art spelled A A R T. <laughs> art. <laughs> art. <laughs> Just because I couldn't remember any other word <laughs> alphabetically before art, but after Eric Gokra. <laughs> cool. Uh, <clears throat> This is um, the artwork section here. Yeah, <laughs> world like, renowned languages. I have these languages that I can speak. Ostensibly, other people might speak them. So I'm going to try the L for language. Yeah, L for maybe, language. Maybe go to Auron. Like, Aarakocra is a, is a common language, right? So okay. You go up to the language section. I can yeah. hear it being spoken outside in the trees everywhere. Just. <laughs> 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 you turn to Hortensio. That's racist. <laughs> <laughs> it's racist. I can Your say bird it. birds sound I like can bird stuff. You can't say you birds. Say it. <laughs> um, you go to the languages and you again you you uh, you turn up empty-handed. What about Auron? Auron, A U R A N. It's another one. Is another language that you speak? Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's a book on Aaron. Aaron, out, 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 what you said. Okay, I got it close <laughs> enough. I want to open it up and then see where this language is from. That's my task. Okay. And while you look into that, and I look that up as well, uh, you gentlemen make your way up to religion. Yeah, on the way, I ask Lakelet um, if she's the head librarian here. I am. Uh, this was my um, my father's library. It's it's been it's been our family duty to not not his library. It it was his duty to um, to maintain this library, and now it's mine. And uh, well, what else? What else can you tell us about the the town of Trinos? You must not only being a, a local uh, who's never left, but. Uh, but you know somebody who's who's who pervades and and conveys information. You must know a lot about Tremos. Um, absolutely. Um, it's 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 more of a town of necessity. Uh, long long ago, uh, there was a uh, druid wizard who accidentally made these trees grow way too big and um, if we were to cut them down they would smash everything around them most of the the it would be difficult to get out of the way if we were to try to do anything with them besides keep them up so uh, they started to 
um, build this town into the trees. And as they've, as the trees have grown, the certain uh, stores and and shops and things have climbed up higher into the the branches of the trees. So there's been necessary um, construction done to elevate the other stores and new stair stores move in underneath. And just as things grow, this this town has has been here as, as long as we can remember. Well, that's what Armand meant. He was trying to sell me on the town. And was, I, I met a council member, member at the bar earlier when I still was missing a foot. And he kept trying to say that, that the town that one day would, would be in the heavens. Uh, that's, that's what they say. That's what the council says. That's kind of spooky. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, spooky. <laughs> uh, I, I imagine we're at religion now that we've mentioned the heavens. Mm -hmm. We're Our, getting there. <laughs> um, any uh, any trace of any books on uh, what we came here for? Um, there are a couple books on uh, ancient religions. Um, there's one on the Ullman culture, culture. There's one uh, called the uh, Lost City of Tamawachan. I grabbed that one. Mm. Um, um, and I, I open it up, and uh, I'm scanning, looking for uh, a map or um, or perhaps any 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 visuals that I recall from being in the lost city of Tom Watch and some sort of foothold where I can land and then expand my literary exploration out from there. Um, essentially, what you're looking at is a. Give me a. Uh, a book check. What would be the knowledge check that I want you to do? Use library. Yeah, use library. Yeah. <laughs> roll, to, roll to use library. Now, um, give me a. I would say straight intelligence or. Yeah, give me a straight intelligence roll. Yeah, yeah. So I don't want to do history. Give me a give me an intelligence roll. Intelligence. <laughs> intelligence. Uh, that would be twenty-two. Um, you're looking at a less accurate drawing of the map you already have of Tamawachin. Mm. Um, the map that you found within the city, uh, the map you're looking at has enough markers on it and, and uh, points of interest that you can tell that it's the same place that you're thinking of, but it's as if it were drawn by somebody who'd heard of Tamawachin and not somebody who's been to Tamawachin. Uh, is there bibliographical information in the sleeve? Can I see who authored this book? It appears to have been um, rubbed off. It's an it's an old book. It, it, you, they may not have signed it. Hmm. Um. I, I ask uh, Lakelet, who was the last person to uh, check out this book? Um, uh, there, there would be too many books for us to keep track of um, such detail. But maybe there's a spell that can help us right now. Yes, a spelly spell, spell, spell. All right, I think, yeah, Tan, Tan finally sees an opportunity to be useful. He sees that he sees I know spells. That Lake Lit. Yeah, well, he sees that Lake Lit is That's clearly fire. not not <laughs> doing something that you want to do. So he's gonna cast Yeah, let's just go with it. He's gonna cast Charm Person. <laughs> On Lake Lit? On Lake Lit, yeah. And um Isn't she kinda already charmed from off? No, persuaded. Uh oh, oh. 
in the natural way that all are charmed by Ong. <laughs> <laughs> no magic necessary, yeah. bitches. Simple minded, <laughs> that simple man kind of. <laughs> oh, he's so cute because he likes to play with rocks. <laughs> All right, so she's got to beat a wisdom save of 14. Still got a five. Well, plus two is seven. Still failed. All right, so she regards me as a friendly acquaintance, which is nice because I haven't even said anything so far. And also <laughs> nice because she had no reason to believe you weren't. <laughs> All right, yeah. I need this spell in real life. <laughs> Um, you just need to pump it into the water nowadays. Jesus, <laughs> I got enemies everywhere. <laughs> so I think I think actually the right thing to do is um, Lakelet, baby, friend, baby doll. Give us, give us a oh, little baby. time. Give us a little time to to peruse this wonderful this wonderful structure on our own and we'll and we'll talk to you later um <laughs> go right ahead and she goes and she strolls away to give you guys some privacy and Tan says what what are what the hell are we looking for have you is this a good book do you need more books uh, i don't get the sense this is a good book i think hortensia would know a little bit better but I mean, we came seeking knowledge after getting attacked, well, right? I agree. I, I think we're looking for insights about Tamawacha that uh, can be leveraged against our enemies, no? Uh, we're now being actively pursued by Tootsie's crone. Uh, Tootsie's, uh, what are they called? Cronies. His cronies. What do you keep saying? <laughs> His croutons. Uh, out of out of lack of respect for Tootsie Laha, I call him Tootsie. Tootsie. Tootsie Laha, Tootsie. Tootsie. Okay, okay. So are you saying that anything I anything I wonder about, am I am I able to find some answers in here amongst these shelves? In a way, it's a lot like looking for a needle in a haystack. It's in there, and if you are diligent. You'll find it. And if I move too fast, I'll get poked in the hand? Precisely. Tom looks around with a new sense of wonder, looking for the things that might possibly poke him as he comes, <laughs> uh -huh. through, the as he comes through the shelves. But, and then I, I grab my shoulder and say, keep in mind, this is inside knowledge. The map that we have is better than the map in this book. So uh -huh. again, not necessarily is this an accurate representation always of what's outside of this building. Well spoken. We're, we're in the religion section, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you feel a calling from a certain book, Mr. Tan, Domain? I feel, I feel called to think about, because I know, Tan knows a little bit about religion, that there's, um, there's ancient, ancient practices. He knows that his practice goes like centuries and centuries back and and he has a hunch that maybe Zilzilaha is a, a very very old one as well and these religions are hard to um institutionalize and and record and so he's even thinking like is there is there anything about muazih in this library and if so maybe something about Zilzilaha wouldn't be uh, far away or might be in the same compendium of of old ancient practices. Just to better understand what you're looking for, are you looking for a book on Muazik, or are you looking on like a book of like a? Um, I think actually I want a family say, tree of gods. Is that what I, you're trying to say? I, I want to say what I'm saying out loud to our attention and I want to. Uh, I'm t telling this to you just to try and give you ideas about where to uh, look. Well, well my I'm, eyes light up because I, I'm taking Tom's thoughts and i know how to use a library i say let's go to m for muazi lead the way yeah i think i think we i think i follow at this point in time because while there may be things i'd like to find in the book 
or maybe books I'd like to find it in the library. Um, I don't want to get too off track and on my own at the moment, and I'm happy to explore. So I, I go exploring with, with Hortensio and Tan as well. So um, you don't actually have to go to M from Yozik. You can stay in religion because it's the god. Hmm. So you um, head over to religion.m for music and there is a you go to m for muazik and uh you find a book describing the history of muazik wow i'm i'm dumbfounded at this that this that this thing of of uh of sliced up tree exists to <laughs> to speak silently about something that I've only ever heard expressed in vibrant tones of a enclave of tieflings singing together before. This is this this kind of like Tan doesn't really believe in the concept of blasphemy anymore, but this is kind of bringing about like memories of what his father would have told him was blasphemy. I kind of like I look at the book and then I, I actually like take a step back for a second like <laughs> uh it's like oh, it's open like it, uh, Hortense, you open it. <laughs> but it's like I'm seeing a seeing a drawing of your god that you've only ever imagined. Like, you're not yeah, allowed yeah. to put him on paper. He's exactly. he exists in here. Gotcha. And uh, I sense this this uh, sort of anxious turn uh, in Tan after after he sees the book of Muazik, and I say, Tan, if I read you a book about uh, an old troll who who eats people who try to cross his bridge, that doesn't mean that you eat people when they try to cross your bridge. Ton, ton laughs too loudly. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a classic children's fable where I come from. Meant to, meant to spread good feeling. Indeed. And teach lessons about proper... Bridge ownership policy. <laughs> or since you that, that too, what I what I mean to say is that you do not blaspheme by reading about Muazi. Mm, I I believe you, but I want you to open the book. All right, I I will. And I open it. You catch fire. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> the uh, don't get your, don't get your hand poked. Um, give me a will Hortensio and Tan please both give me an intelligence roll 11 uh, plus 3 on that right uh, 16 um Tan, you end up hearing, you're able to glean what is a, uh, essentially a, um, a nice story about uh, how uh, the being that brought music to this world was uh, exalted to the status of, of, uh, of, of a deity or a saint. Yeah, yeah, everything Hortensio is reading uh, really lines up with lines up with the dogma that I know. Mu Muazik is this um, is this part kind of this perfect blend of demon and angel. It's not Muazik; he's housed in one of the particular celestial families. Muazik is this really independent deity who um, who just loves to make people feel things, you know, whether they be lustful or tender or or uh, vicious or loving or contemplative. Interesting. Um, Hortensio. What you are able to kind of take away um, is uh, yet another family tree, um, but that of 
um, the gods in creation. Mm. Uh, what what stands out to you um, besides the 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 lines that eventually follow towards uh, and explain uh, the existence of music, uh, you notice a couple other um, pairs of lines on the tree. You notice uh, there is a, uh, in particular, you notice two gods that, that have split from a single branch. Uh, the god of fate and the god of destiny. And uh, you know how when, um, you know, like when you see a, a family tree uh, written out, you see uh, like two people come together and then it splits and then it makes however many kids they are, right? Right, right. So in this same branch that broke up, became, that became Fate and Destiny, Fate and Destiny came back together and you see um, one other name listed on the family tree, and it says, um, O oh, Fortuna. Can Tom do a history roll to see if he oh, remembers shit. some shit that was said to him at the bar a long time ago? Absolutely. How do we do? How do we do? How do we do? 12. She went uh, what was it you were trying to... I don't know if that's good enough. Remember Bowman? <laughs> oh, yes, Bowman. There was this guy who talked a lot to Tan about the trappings of fate and destiny back in the day. Uh, yeah. Um... How's 12? That, might, that memory might be a little fuzzy. You remember him saying something about there was a difference between the two uh, and um, the spirituality of the situation but not necessarily what he exactly he said yeah so my hand shoots out to the page just fate destiny or fortuna Hortensio you're Hortensio you're smarter than me I, I remember I remember talking about this this feels honestly this feels important to to all of us in some way that I almost feel like I've forgotten on our on our adventures through through making our own mugs and and beer and and looting dungeons i i feel like there's something here that i'm that i'm missing hope fortuna is a name that i remember from uh having to do with when we were first introduced to the prophecy i agree with that yeah uh, and, and he was a super powerful wizard that we met. Well, not necessarily wizard, but a super powerful being. Being yeah. that we met at the Daylory Inn. That's and we couldn't. He spurned us. We couldn't touch him. Yeah, yeah. And he always but had we, like an effect of of like time. He like create. He like cornered time. I don't know. Were we? Are we? Are we working for him? Yeah, we know yeah, that. Yeah. Todd asked this question to you on. What do you think? Either way, if that's a name that shows up, then I think that we need to keep looking in that. That's that's a good direction to start to keep looking. Oh, and Fortuna. Fortuna, Fortuna was present in my father's uh, fateful meeting where I impersonated Sir Honk and nearly sealed his doom. Right. Uh, I was found out by O Fortuna there. Ready? Flashback. <laughs> you're late or early. I tend to forget. Whichever word means that your time and place are all wrong and I don't like your face. Regardless, whether you were drawn here by cruel coincidence, infectious curiosity, or by the unavoidable siren song known as fate, be warned. You've arrived in a place of magic and wonder. A place where music and spoken word influence more than mere emotions. They bend time, twist space, and vice versa. This particular space and time in which you find yourself is as wondrous as it is doomed. 
enter the Bartles, Klimp, Hortensio, Ong, Tan, and Velimir. Although they have been blessed with the gift of gab and the might to manage melody, our heroes are far from heroic. Nonetheless, a mysterious benefactor seems to have taken a dangerously intrusive interest in you and your abilities. For now, at least, you have a roof over your heads. Said roof belongs to the day dark Lorien. A dark and glorious mirror looms over the stage of this inn, as does the destiny of the innkeeper himself. Haunted by Daydark's past and uncertain future, he has taken to the Bartles and shown them kind hospitality. Poor Daydark, unaware of the consequences. Hurry up now, adventurers. Mustn't dawdle. The clock keeps ticking, and time, I'm afraid, is not on your side. <laughs>